Hello everyone and welcome to this video on the fundamentals of control systems. In today's video we're going to talk about Laplace transform examples. Specifically we'll talk about unit step functions, unit impulse functions, and exponential functions. I'm Gus and if this sounds good to you hit that thumbs up button and let's dive right in. So let's start out with the unit step function. A unit step function is a function that has a value of 0 before time t equals 0 and then has a value of 1 at time greater than 0. And this is kind of what it looks like. See, it has a value of 1 as time is like greater than 0. This is t0. And then before that, it has a value of 0. And I use the switch time here as 0. It doesn't need to re really be like that. I only did that to simplify the drawing here for myself. It could be really any time that you pick for your system. And now, so we know that the definition of the Laplace transform for any function u of t is equal to the integral from 0 to infinity, that function times e to the minus st dt, right? And since we're taking the, the, the integral from 0 to infinity, we know the value of the step function to be 1. So this is still the integral from 0 to infinity, 1 times e to the minus st dt. So really, for a step function, the integral is only taken for the exponential. And we know that the integral of an exponential, and you can look this up, um, is basically the exponential itself uh, multiplied by 1 over the um, whatever is multiplying the exponent factor. And so this integral, we have to substitute 0 and infinity, which are the bounds of the integration. And when we do that, we get e to the minus infinity minus e to the 0 divided by minus s. And we know that e to the minus infinity is actually 0. e to the 0 is 1, so this ends up being minus 1 over minus s, which is 1 over s. So, in summary, the Laplace of a unit step function is equal to 1 over s. And now the unit step function is actually an important function. We'll see in later videos how we're going to use it to do things in systems uh, to play with systems and to design controllers for those. But so this is the example for computing Laplace transform for such a unit step function. In this next example, let's consider the unit impulse function. And a unit impulse function is really a special function that is essentially defined in a way that it is infinite or undefined really at time equals zero and it's zero everywhere else. And it has this property where the integral of the function itself is equal to 1. And you can see here I'm using the uh, Greek letter delta to represent a unit impulse. And it's really otherwise known as a Dirac delta uh, function, which was de developed by the uh, great Paul Dirac to study the density of point masses and point um, charges in physics. And so it's really not a conventional function in the sense, but it can help us define actions that are impulsive in nature. Like, for example, if you're playing pool or if you're kicking a ball, the act of the kick or the pool cue hitting each hitting other balls uh, is an impulse action where there's nothing right before, then a really high spike, and that's it. Right? And this function helps us define that. And so if we look at the Laplace of delta, right, that's going to be equal to the integral of 0 to infinity of delta e to the minus st dt, right? So we know this function here, delta, is 0, everywhere else but 0, right? So really the bounds here can be changed. They can be written to be 0 minus to 0 plus, I'll explain what that means in a second, of delta e minus and so 0 minus is the time right before 0. So just right before. And 0 plus is the time just right after 0. So this integral bounds are really tight. And that's just because of the nature of this impulse function and how it only is defined at t equals 0. And if you're talking about a unit impulse, typically in engineering, that has a value of 1. Right? We represent it as a value of 1. I'm using here the mathematical definition of infinity as if it's like infinitely large. Right? So if, if we do do that, then we can say we know that e to the minus st at 0, we know that that's equal to 1, and it's defined. Right? 
Uh, and so whether it's at zero minus or zero plus, it doesn't matter. So if you are approaching an exponential function like this from the left or from the right at zero, you're always going to get to the value of one. So really inside this integral, this term is going to be one because we know that that is the value. So really what you end up with, if this becomes one, is the integral from zero minus to zero plus of the delta function dt. And we know already, based on the definition of the delta function, that that is equal to 1. All right, so the Laplace of the delta function, or the unit impulse, is actually equal to 1. And you can see how this is the power of the Laplace transform. Because a function in time, like a unit impulse like this, is actually a bit complicated to analyze. We can physically have intuition about it. Like if you're playing baseball, and you're hitting the ball with a bat, right before at zero minus there's nothing going on before that event but as soon as i hit the ball there's this large spike and i can feel it in the bat and then at zero plus again it goes away and it's 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 easy to talk about but when you want to do mathematical manipulations it's a little difficult difficult so when we apply the laplace transform we get this one value and now you see that in the s domain the impulse function has a value of one and that makes things easier to work with mathematically, and that's the beauty of the Laplace transform. So in this next and final example, we're going to take a look at an exponential function. So f of t is e to the minus at. And so we know the Laplace of f of x, or f of t, is the integral from 0 to infinity, e minus at times e minus st dt. Right, I'm directly just plugging in this value right here for f of t. And this is my function. This is the def from the definition of the Laplace. And so when we have two exponents multiplied, we can exponentials multiplied, we can sum their exponents. So this can be written as 0 to infinity e to the minus s plus a times t dt. Right? And so I know that the integral for an exponent is essentially 1 over minus s plus a, which is this term right here, times e to the minus s plus a t. I need to substitute the bounds of the integral. And so if we do that, we get e to the minus infinity minus e to the zero divided by minus s plus a. And so this term, e to the minus infinity, will go to zero. This term right here is 1, or sorry, yeah, 1, and there's a negative sign here. So it's minus 1 over minus s plus a, which is 1 over s plus a. So that's the Laplace of e to the minus a t. And these kind of exponential functions are actually important in systems theory and in dynamical systems, especially linear dynamical systems, because we'll see that they play a role in how the system response over time is in future videos. And with that, this video comes to an end. I hope you've enjoyed the examples we gave on the Laplace transform. If you did, hit the thumbs up button and think about subscribing to the channel and hitting the notification bell. That way you get a notification every time we have a new video. Thanks for watching.